Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of SAS Showdown. My name is Rose Layton, and I am here with my partner in crime, as always. Colin McCarthy, great to be back here again, Rose, for another episode. Almost at the end of season three, so yeah, we're uh, we've there. Co- yeah, yeah, we've covered uh, outages, layoffs. We did our review. Uh, we did the SAS pricing. Um, mm-hmm. which uh, was very interesting. Uh, rewind a couple, go back a couple of episodes and listen to that if you missed it. But uh, what's being covered this week? What is your topic du jour? Well, so this is, I think, kind of a frivolous topic, Colin, but I okay. added it to our I added it to our, our episode planning list just because um, I do think it's really interesting, like the sort of market niche that's grown around it. So today we are talking about employee engagement, rewards and recognition. So this is just sort of like a, it's like a web of apps that have grown in the last, I think six, seven years or so, like they're really fairly recent, even in terms of SaaS. Um, And I think have only gotten potentially even more popular since the pandemic, because um, they, I think they started with like very remote forward teams and, you know, during the, the pandemic and during the lockdowns, like everybody was remote. <laughs> and so um, I think a lot of companies engage these tools to to try to keep their employees on the same page. Um, so anyway, so like, what are the apps that we're talking about today? Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. The ones Give us, that lay, out, you, lay, lay out the land. What, is it, what does it look like? What are we Yeah, the, the ones that I think a lot of people have heard of, um, Culture Amp is a big one. Um, and that does like employee pulse surveys and things like that. Um, there's Lattice. Um, I think earlier you mentioned Reflective. Yeah. Um, there's also uh, on the rewards and recognition side, there's Kudos um, and Hey Taco. Right. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's a bunch of other ones in that area. But then I think uh, if you're a Slack user, uh, you would remember our old buddy Plus Plus, which was a free app. <laughs> plus Plus. Yeah, it was a free app, and it was a way to sort of recognize people without any consequences, I guess, if it makes sense. But the app died, and so it left a hole in many people's hearts. Oh. Um, yeah, and I remember we had we had conversations in Better IT about it when it died because. Um, it was pretty pretty ubiquitous, I think, even for just a Slack app. Um, I, everybody who was on Slack seven years ago knows what Plus Plus is. So. Right. I'm surprised that it hasn't been sort of open sourced and uh, and revised, or maybe there's there's a new Plus Plus. Um, I I don't think that it was open sourced. Well, maybe I I suppose somebody made it their pet project. I know that like at organizations I was at and have been at there had been sort of like internal initiatives okay. to sort of recreate plus plus and plus right. plus is not that complicated. Basically you it's like you send a Slack message in any channel. That's like literally it's what it is. Plus plus you use the plus plus icons. Um, and then you add someone and then you, you send a message. Right. So it's a way of, it was a way of, um, mm-hmm. Uh, acknowledging that somebody had done a good piece of work. It was the, right. the high five, the attaboy, you yeah. know, good, and good job also kept that you used to have board. in the office. Right. Okay. Yeah. So in that so they, sense. They, they, they gamified it then. Yes. Yeah. They gamified it without a bunch of bells and whistles, I think, because then, you know, um, the, the sort of, I guess, more complex version of Plus Plus is um, Hey Taco and Kudos. Um, and both of those have a very similar message. There's, um, they started as a way to, in Slack, you would send a message um, and it would sort of add some, add a point to somebody, right? Um, and you can do leaders leaderboards or not, but um, the way that Hey Taco and Kudos work is you can exchange your points, your, your mystical internet points, Okay. For actual like real life rewards. Mm. Yes. So it becomes a way of like 
you're not only rewarding each other, but like the company is also giving you stuff for it. Right. So almost like a, a virtual tip jar that would actually provide you a tip mm-hmm. in the end of for, for doing your, your, your everyday job to a suitable standard. If, if one of your colleagues was happy with what yeah. you have done, they could send you a taco or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah. And some of these, some of these platforms, I think kudos in particular um, have sort of, I guess, added on and morphed into um, performance reviews, employee engagement, right? Like yeah. this sort of like HR adjacent area, right? Where yeah. it's not, we're not just tracking like employees and who they are and where they live and how they get paid and all of that stuff. Like it's, it's the sort of separate area that's like people operations, right? Yeah. People, the, ex- we're, we're employee experience. Yeah. 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 There has been a big, as you say, growth in that market with, mm-hmm. um, uh, was it uh, KPIs and performance reviews and goal yeah, setting, OKRs, all KPIs, of that, OKRs, all yeah, of that kind of stuff. Um, being you know moves from being uh, a traditional form. Um, I have in my in my in my years in the industry, I have had to fill out uh, paper documents uh, um, back in the day with a, with a pen, um, and then we've worked on Word documents, Excel spreadsheets strangely enough a google slide which was terrible um because you could never do it on a, on a laptop while you were traveling on the train you like needed your giant monitor because trying to add data into a, a slide is terrible um <laughs> but it was very nice using i've used reflective in the past uh, and you know reflective is a it is a good application because it's spelt with a k um oh i see like yeah <laughs> 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 yeah, the uh, I think I think I think the C the C T I I haven't used it for a while, but I think there's there's a K in there somewhere. Um, so you know you know that <laughs> it's cool. There's only one place there could be a K. <laughs> and then and then and then lattice was the last one that I've used. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is it is a good way you know to do those quarterly check ins. And obviously, a lot of uh, companies have been you know, focusing on that in, in the last few years, the, 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 the one-to-ones, certainly if you're a line manager, um, or if you're, you know, a team member, you should be having those regular, uh, one-to-one, you know, um, sort of health checks, wellness checks, you know, career checks, goal checks. Um, it's very good for, for performance tracking and having it, you know, documented in a, in an app that does make it very easy to, for companies to set, you know, distribute a, uh, a template, um, you know, mm-hmm. if you're doing any sort of grading, um, normalizing across for, cause also, uh, you know, if anybody who's working in a, a for-profit company, hopefully you also have a bonus, uh, scheme and a lot of the, you know, um, reviews that a you'll lot of get. Those, yeah, depend on will, what your performance review. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, the, the percentage of it, if you get a, you know, a one, you'll get, you know, if you're lucky, a 150% of your potential bonus. If you get a, an average three, you might get, you know, 100% or, or, or less. Um, yeah. So they are, they are really good tools. It's, do we think that the, that the expansion of them has been, um, uh, a, a, um, I lost my lost my train of thought for a second. Uh, as the expansion of them, you know, coincided with the expansion of Teams and Slack and SaaS applications in general, or is this have they gone, you know, uh, hand in hand with the expansion of Office three sixty five and Google Workspace and other tools? Because That's the thing I, is, I think I think. Like before we had really, I think, centralized chat services at work, everything is very email based. And it's a lot easier to just like send a link in an email and have people fill out a form, right? There's not like, so for instance, I was I was doing research before we, we sat down to to take the show. And like, I, I saw that like Qualtrics has an employee experience module. Yeah, yeah. And I thought that was really interesting. And I started reading about it because I was like, I mean, it's just surveys. Like really how big could big a deal could it be? But like Qualtrics will do like, it'll send out poll surveys based on AI modeling to like who should get the survey. And like, so instead of doing like random, like random samples, it's doing like, 
almost like machine learning examples. Like it's learning who it should target. Right. And I thought that was a really fascinating way to approach that. And I'm just, I'm a little, I'll be honest with you. I'm skeptical about the benefits of it. <laughs> of, of employee surveys in general? No, no, I know... not, not employee surveys in general. I think that those can be really valuable. The data that comes from them is really valuable. I'm, I'm curious about the bells and whistles. I think it depends on how big your company is. If you're right. a, a, a 10, 20, you know, 100 person company, you could probably put your finger in the air and, and you know, lick it and see which way the wind's <laughs> blowing and, and, and see how people are feeling. If you work for a very large corporation okay. like I do, then you do need all of the bells and whistles because you're going to be pulling in so many data points from so many different areas. Right. You don't, you, you definitely to, don't want to survey the whole company at once. And I guess what's or, the difference or maybe, between, but you, you, you're going to need to be able to process the data that you get and run the reports right. that will come out of it. Adequately okay. So in that to, sense, it's good to have an app like this that is basically doing that for you. Right. Yeah. You yeah. don't have to process your own data. They no, can process no. It for you. you know, you can, you could do a Google form and all your results will be in a spreadsheet, you know, in a, in, in a Google sheet. You can either use the inbuilt, you know, charts yeah, and, Google and then you form can build to get Word your clouds yourself. And... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, it, and, I, and I've seen people send them out through Survey Monkey, you know, using a sort of a, the, the free service that you can get. So, the, it, it depends. It, it is valuable. I think what you integrate and what you choose will depend on obviously the comms platforms maybe that you're on, um, what ties into your HR system, because I know some of these um, tie in very closely. Um, I think Reflective ties into Bamboo very nicely. I'm sure a lot of these other ones do. You know, so that the, you have the correct org structure for your line manager, et cetera, and all your reports so that you don't have to re enter all of your data. Um, and I've just thought of another one that I've uh, used in the past, um, one called Glint, oh, okay. which um, would do uh, employee surveys. And what that, it was obviously these were all anomal anom anonymous, anon anonymized. Um, anonymized. Yes. Anonymized, that's the word. Yeah. Um, another word I have uh, struggled saying at times. Um, it's all, it's the, the information is anonymous depending on the size of, and, and depending on the size of your team will dictate what uh, comments or information might be, could be provided to, you know, department heads. So right. if you've got five people in your department, you're not going to be able to see personalized comments because then because of those personalized comments, you could potentially work you could out very who said what. Easily, but yeah. if you have a department of 50 people, you could drill down and see some of the personalized comments that people have made because they're going to be, you know, more anonymous or, or less identifiable for, you know. Um, and that, right. that stuff is, we, we used that for a number of years and it was, you know, I think a good, um, you know, a bellwether check for the, for the the um, temperature of of the, the the culture and how people were were feeling, you know, along the amongst the company. Um, yeah, I yeah, I think uh, one of the things I was going to ask you, Colin, is because so you've been a leader of small teams and you're now a leader of a larger team. Yeah. and I wanted to ask you about how I guess recognition for people's work has changed over the size of those teams. Like how do you, That's how do you recognize people in a question. small team versus how do you recognize people in a large team? Right. I'm trying to think if there's any difference to the way that gets done, I guess. It depends you on. Can't be spouting off in every meeting, like, "Hey, so and so did a great job," and blah blah blah, and then you just got fifteen people you have to thank. Um, I don't think you can do that. It depends on how many yeah. people you have in your team and and how regularly you meet. Um, and obviously there is. I think if you are a leader of 
any you know size team you should and if somebody in your team does well you can either call it out in in a larger scale meal meeting or you know ping them individually and say you know thanks for doing x y and z or dealing with this ticket or you know identifying this problem so so early um I think there's probably I, um, maybe an informational flow that gets a little bit disrupted when you're with a larger team, though, because you're not necessarily with all of your employees on the ground. Yes. Like you are when you're you know, overseeing six people, right? <laughs> uh, I have one, two, three, four people I've never met in my team and they've worked with us. Some of them worked with us for the last four years. And I'm wow. on the West Coast, and I've, and I've never, never met, met them. them. Never met them. I was going to meet two of them. Uh, unfortunately, I was I was going to go to LA in for a conference, company conference in February of 2020, and then that conference <laughs> and that, that conference canceled. They got Obviously. delayed. It got delayed, and then canceled. So I have never met those two people. Spent a lot of time talking to them online and working with them. And I guess that's the thing. Is, yes. Yeah. So how do you how do you recognize those people? Like, do you have to rely on other people to sort of funnel up the recognition for you? Do you create space for other people to recognize each other? I think this comes down to general team building um, Mm -hmm. and and building a a cohesive um, collaborative team. I would argue that employee experience and employee engagement, it all really comes down to team building. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but I don't think here's the thing. I don't if you if you don't have that natively, an app is not gonna help. An app, you have to have it without technology. You have to have the human interaction, you know. You know, it's funny, Colin. I think that we've said this before. We probably <laughs> if you if you don't have the underlying foundation, the app is not going to help you. No, no. The app is just going to tick a box that your company or leadership think that you have to, you know, have ticked because you can put it on your, you know, employee brochures. Oh, yeah, we'll track your, you know, your uh, your performance and, you know, mm-hmm. set you goals in, you know, XYZ app. But if you're not, if you don't have regular one-to-ones or catch-ups or team meetings and, and, a, and an open dialogue up and down your structure with, uh, positive mm-hmm. and also constructive, you know, comments. Yeah, if you your if your strategy you, isn't well defined, if your KPI KPIs I've, aren't well defined, if your teams aren't able to set goals and they're very reactionary, like an app is not going to fix any of those things. No, no, and I've I've never I knew that I could never shy away from telling or talking to a team member and saying and giving them advice on a better way of you know, um, tackling something. So, you know, I would never say, you know, that was completely wrong unless they did, you know, break something, but say, you know, but even then that's a teachable moment, you know, like what have you learned from, you know, what went wrong with X, X, Y, and Z, what would you have done differently next time, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, yeah, you know, saying, you know, it's good that you, you know, dealt with, you know, this issue, you know, just as a, you know, a, a bit of advice, you know, next time I, I, if I was going to deal with it, this is what I would have looked for, or this is how I would have dealt with it. If you, you know, maybe if you try that next time, it might be, it might save you, you know, one or two hops or, you know, uh, steps in the process. Um, so it being, you know, complimentary and constructive, um, and, uh, yeah, I, and it, it has. I think I think it has paid off. Um, but it, it, if it's if it's delivered poorly, like anything that you put in any one of these apps for somebody's you know goals or reviews, it can have a very very negative effect. Um, so you should always be looking to provide positive reinforcement, um, you know, and and guide people. Um, you know, and, and and I think guiding is the is a thing to do. It's terrible if you, it's the old adage of teaching a man to fish. If you give him a fish, he's going to come back and ask for another fish. So, 
you should teach him to fish and then he'll bugger off and leave you alone. So <laughs> um, and I, I learned that, you know, when from a, a years ago when I used to work in a supermarket in the UK and the area manager would come in and we would be talking about, you know, ordering bacon and, and lettuces and cheese. He would never tell me the answer. He would, you know, drag the answer out of me of, of what we should be doing. Cause he's like, I'm not going to tell you the answer because that doesn't help either of us. I've got to help you learn how to get to the answer yourself. Right. And I find that's the best. And I probably come off as, you know, it might be seen as being a dick move to like not give your IT staff the answer, but like dr drag them to thinking about how they get to the answer themselves. Yeah, it's, you know? it, I think it's better for them in the long run. Um, I think we've both probably worked with people who have only really ever experienced been giving the, being given the answer. Right. Um, and I know that like, I have a tendency this is like one of my personal development opportunities. See, we're talking about uh, professional development, but um, <laughs> I have a tendency sometimes when I think somebody is doing something the wrong way to like correct them. Um, and so, but it's funny because like in my, my experience, the way that I learned was not, by doing those things. So I've had to learn to kind of like accept that like other people want to do things themselves instead of being told how to do them because that's how they're going to learn. And so like, I just have to let other people sometimes do the wrong thing. Right. As long as there's not a lot of risk involved. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we, we if, try if to you... minimize the risk obviously, <clears throat> but yeah. yeah. If you see somebody pushing on a door rather than, and the sign says pull, maybe just let them carry on pushing it for a, you know a few <laughs> more minutes because then they'll they'll learn themselves oh it, this is a pull door um right you know right. As, a, as a very simple analogy uh an example but yeah there is no harm in letting people make uh, an error for themselves and then have to repeat something the right way i yeah that is yeah. a very you know they use the frame teachable moment um <laughs> We've had, I've seen many teachable moments over the years. I've had many teachable moments myself um, with things that I've I've done. So, yeah, um, yeah. I think there are, the, there are definitely some big ones out there. I think the yeah the thing the reason that I really wanted to talk about this topic is because I think the older I get, the the longer I'm in this career. Um. I think when I was like young and right out of school and like just entering the workforce, the idea of like having an app where I recognize my employees or my like fellow colleagues with internet points and then allowed them to exchange those internet points for like, I don't know, a pizza party in the office, you know? Um, I think those things were really attractive when I was younger. And I think now, the longer I'm in this career, the longer I'm in the workforce, the more I think about like really truly valuable things, like having like our our company having a good strategy, right? Our company being able to define um, what our priorities are, and like and that trickling down through the teams, um, and being able to to teach people in a way, right? Like, like let your team members fail and like, let them learn what they want to learn and like, um, grow organically, I guess. And, and it doesn't mean you can't ever have a pizza party. <laughs> no. It just means that like, you maybe like that, that may not be their best way to recognize your team for the work that they're no. doing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's very true. These, yeah, some some of these apps can't be, as yeah, can't be a, a replacement for you know, um, actually doing you know the right thing and having the right structure. Um, mm -hmm. They're not, uh, you know, they're not a. <laughs> They're, they're not a spray can of, of gold paint on something you might find on the, on the sidewalk. Um, right. you know, you've, you've got to have, you've got to have the proper structure and controls and policies and, 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 a, and a, 
business plan and a, and a roadmap. Um, and this is, you know, the additional extra that goes onto it. So, yeah, I think they do have to be treated with, um, with some thought. The worst thing I have seen in one environment, you know, if you ever go to the airport and you're in the restroom, the bathroom, they have those little boards and you have like the buttons like for green, yellow and red, like how am I doing or how clean is the restroom? I once yeah. saw, you've, you've seen them? I once saw one of them in a company um, and they had it by the door and it was like, you know, how are you feeling say, today? I, the last time I saw one of those was actually at an Ikea, I think. Yeah, that's the place. Like, oh, yeah, I've, I've, I normally see them at airports. It's like, you know, what was your experience today going through, you know, yeah. TSA? Are you happy? Like, yeah, right, yeah. You know, I've good. seen them at airports I, too. Yeah, how was this? But, but I, I saw that at a, at a company once and um, nobody's using it. And then uh, as I was leaving, I, I pressed the red button and somebody was like, oh, why do you press the red button? I said, well, if we press the red button, the company's going to think we're unhappy and they're going to give us beer and pizza. So there's no point <laughs> us pressing the green button because they'll think we're happy. And I know that, that employers will think, oh, employees are unhappy. Let's give them beer and pizza because that's all yeah, they I want. Yeah, I think the question is just too generic, right, when you're looking at those little boards. Because, like, the restroom one almost makes sense to me. It's like, how clean is this restaurant? restroom, yeah. right? Like, green to red. Um, but, like, the the one at Ikea, for example, is just, like, you know, how is your experience? And I'm like, I mean, the, the question is so vague. It's like, it could be like, are you finding what you're looking for? Like, are the prices agreeable to you? Are the like, like, so the like, the end of transaction survey that I get is like more robust than those little thingies. Yeah. Um, and I can't imagine having one at your workplace, because you're absolutely right. Like, how am I feeling today? Depends on so many factors. Yeah. That like, yeah. you really can't oversimplify like that. You know, like I had to read a, read a 59 page SOW today. Um, and am I happy about that? No. <laughs> 59. Do I have to read it anyway? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there, there is, there, there is, there is a joy in reading beautiful documents, though. I, uh, it's not. I recently common. read, read, read a 127-page technical design document, and it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a piece of, it was a piece of art. It was a masterpiece. That's lovely. I really enjoyed That's lovely. reading. It. I really, actually, I do enjoy um, a really well designed and laid out technical document. Yes. yes. It doesn't matter how yeah. long it is. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I think that question is just too generic. I guess the the interesting thing is I just, I mean, we're, we're sort of like pinning down, like, you know, these apps won't fix all your problems. Um, it may not be appropriate to recognize your employees this way. Um, I guess, is there something that we need to be concerned about from a security perspective? Because I will say people put some pretty personal details in employee engagement surveys and poll surveys, depending on the questions you're asking. Well, yeah, I guess. And like people can learn a lot about your company by reading your survey results. Well, uh, least privilege, um, you know, only the people who need access right. to the survey get access to it. Um, you know, when I've been in, but we also in a company need to be in, in a leadership about, like we've, we've talked about all these data breaches and stuff too. So well, like, yes, they this isn't an area be, of apps yeah. that you should neglect just because like, no, no, it may not be connected no. to as many of your other systems as like your no. primary productivity apps. No, 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 yeah. no app should be, um, you know, overlooked when it comes to security. Certainly if it's, you know, these ones may be a little bit less than, you know, your HR or your collaboration or your security tooling. Um, but it's also, yeah. you know, educational, you know, telling the users like, you know, this is an employee survey, you know. Don't put in the employee survey, you know, your complaint with HR because you believe that you should be paid more, you know, talk to HR or talent directly about that. This is not the platform for that. Um, don't put down any personal information. Um, but then maybe the, you know, these apps should have, 
you know, sort of DLP or, you know, regex that, you know, you can't enter your social security number for, uh, for whatever reason you might want to put your social security or your national insurance number into those platforms when you're, you know, adding a comment. So, um, but, you gotta be careful with that kind but, of stuff. Some companies yes, give out employee yeah. ID numbers that look exactly like social security numbers. I'm not uh, going to name the, uh, it's oh. just a large, a large American <laughs> university. It's fine. <laughs> if they're large maybe they'd realize they needed to have uh, have, uh, have, have that many numbers so i think my well, they, they number probably do need 59. that many numbers they just didn't need to format them that way <laughs> yeah 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 i got i got no clue what my current employee number is but previously it was yeah, number 59 are. so it was easy it was easy 59 easy is really nice yeah oh that's because yeah. you were the 59th so. hire right yes yeah <laughs> yeah Started at zero, didn't even randomize. <laughs> um, no, there was just fights over who was zero, I think. So, uh, yeah. but yes, so it will be interesting to see, you know, what um, what gets improved over the coming years with these platforms. Mm -hmm. um, you know, do you see them with... having longevity? I guess, like, or do you see them maybe consolidating? Consolidating in being purchased, probably. So, you know, yeah, if, like you're, bought by if you're HRI, if you're major HRA systems or something. Yeah, yeah. If you're a, a a workday or a bamboo or whatever, you know, ADP or whatever the other, you know, large yeah. um, HR systems, then yeah, they would look at a. Uh, a pin or a glint or a reflective or a lattice, you know, but for all I know, you know, lattice could be part of another, you know, application, you know, I'm sure, you know, Salesforce or some of the others, you know, might pick these up. Um, you know, they might even go into onboarding. I know a lot of, uh, the sort of other SaaS companies, um, doing automations through onboarding you know service now and fresh service you know if you're doing your onboarding of your of your accounts then you know maybe tie in your employee engagement and all the other parts you know into greenhouse if you yeah i think your the work that we do greenhouse. is increasingly integrated um the work we do with hr is increasingly integrated we've been talking about our relationship with hr since season one and so like yeah. this is yet another area, right? Like you identified <laughs> PIN, P Y N, um, yeah. as one of these systems that is. I mean, it's an employee engagement platform. It's also like sort of an internal comms platform, um, but it can be used very, very closely with onboarding, right? To make sure people yeah. have a good yeah. onboarding experience, which is something yeah. that we are very involved in as IT people. And so, yeah, um, yeah. And you end up having a multiple steps. You almost go greenhouse, bamboo, pin, or greenhouse, pin, bamboo. You know, somebody gets hired, pin sends out all the welcome. You know, you've been blah, 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 chosen by this company. And this is what your job's going to be. And then goes into HR, you know, whatever that platform is. And then that feeds right. into, you know, Okta or Better Cloud or ServiceNow or Fresh Service, any of the other platforms that might automatically, you know, create a ticket and provision the account. Yeah. It's it's a whole bunch of steps all talking to each other, you know, normally through APIs. Um, <clears throat> interesting to see how they, you know, might merge into into one instead of having those separate steps. Um, it does get yeah. very confusing. We you know they're all you know separate URL, sep maybe a separate login for some. If it's not all single sign on, they've all got their quirks. You know. Yeah, know. this is definitely one of those areas where I also see like sort of several layers of overlap because, like for instance, like Kudos has. Um, some overlap with, like I said, the rewards and recognition piece, but also the employee engagement piece. Um, and I've seen other platforms that could very easily sort of branch into this um, because they like benefits platforms and like, like employee wellness platforms and stuff, right? Could very easily bridge into this rewards piece right? Re rewards and recognition. So like, yeah. there's, there's sort of, yeah, there's layers of overlap in this, in this market. And so it's, it's just fascinating to me. And I, I, I 
I think that larger organizations tend to, we tend to be more into consolidated stuff, right? Like, you know, a one thing that can, can do a lot of these. Um, so I think, you know, in that sense, we're, we're, we're sort of trending in that direction, but not necessarily because it, it seems to me that these companies have thrived through even prior to the pandemic by targeting mostly small to medium companies, right? That don't necessarily have one of those comprehensive HRAS systems. Yeah, yeah. It's filling a gap that they might have a, <clears throat> a, a smaller team, you know, um, a, uh, a more forward thinking, you know, SaaS based um, startup. Um, right. You know, I think a lot yeah. of these are little startups that are taken up by startups. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the I'd be surprised yeah. if the if the AT and T's and the you know other huge organizations in the world uh, are using these applications. Maybe they are. Um, yeah. yeah, I work Maybe for a huge are. organization, and we do use one of these applications now that was onboarded this year. But previously, we used to use. <laughs> We used to use Word documents and email in the backwards and forwards for for the employee engagement and uh, right. goal tracking. Yeah, no, um, and I think that's the thing is like it, you sort of have to weigh the cost and benefit because I've also worked at an organization right that used Word documents for performance reviews, um, and I thought it was practically archaic, um, to be frank with you, um, and I wanted to reimagine that whole system when I was there into Google Docs or Google Forms. And you can do some really interesting, clever things like that. But I think ultimately my goal, my sort of underlying goal was like, this is really painful for me to fill out right now, right? They're providing a template. I have to make a copy. Um, The formatting gets all messed up when I start typing my stuff in there, right? Like it looks like, like the Word doc that we used to use looked like the kind of thing that you would print out and fill out by hand. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's like, how do we make this digital native? Because there's no way in hell I am printing something out and filling it out by hand today. I just won't do it. I have an iPad. I'll download things on there and fill them out with my Apple pencil before I will print something out and fill it out by hand. I printed something out today and scanned it and sent it back. And I'm like, why, like, why am I still printing something <laughs> out, signing it and sending it back? So, I um, actually, I have my signature saved on my computer, so I don't have to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you just I could have done that, maybe. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I taught you something new today, Colin. It. You don't ever have yeah, to do that Yeah, I know. In, again. Um, <laughs> you, can, you can do it in um, the Adobe... Um, mm-hmm. And you, you can do it in the extension Apple. in Chrome. Yeah, so, yeah. you can do it with I ha- the Apple I ha- Preview app too. I have even done it on my phone on the go where I've installed the Adobe app and had a document and been able something. to sign it and send it back. So Yeah. 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 But I mean, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, so I think all of these apps are they're really interesting because I think they're trying to innovate on a space that ultimately when you boil it down can be very straightforward and very simple. But the question is, is like, are those are those things working for the organization that you have? Um, right. Does it make sense for your employees to fill out a word document for performance reviews? Um, I would are you say able yes. To if you look, if you, survey monkey yeah. to collect yeah. responses from your people, is that like enough data analysis? Can you do your own data analysis? Right. Um, yeah. 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 Better, better to have something than nothing. For sure. Even it's if it is a survey monkey and nothing. a Word document. But I mean, yeah, just to like go back to what we said before, though, like if your organization doesn't have uh, a good environment or a good culture, these apps are not going to fix it for you. Right. They might give you more data that you can use to make decisions. Um, but like, being able to plus plus someone didn't necessarily make their work life better. Right. And even if they took those plus pluses and exchanged them for a pizza party, 
that wasn't necessarily going to make their work life better either. Like it, it doesn't solve for um, being able to develop your skills. It doesn't solve for feeling recognized for the work that you do. It doesn't solve for um, like having professional development opportunities, like places to like upward mobility is a thing for some Mm -hmm. people. Right. If you don't have any of that, like you're not going to make them happy with pizza and beer. No. And (laughs) I know know we're getting to the end of time. um, But uh, uh, employee training platforms, we didn't even discuss. Um, LinkedIn learning, uh, uh, plural site, um, a whole bunch of others um, that are out there. Um, Internal training platforms or sort of commercials, uh, Coursera, a lot of companies, you know, will have corporate accounts for that. Yeah, that's a whole other part that uh, we haven't even covered. So it's a, it's a huge Maybe market. Maybe we'll have to discuss that in a future episode. Yeah, yeah. I think we should have a draw it, draw it all out where this all uh, intersects um, the different <laughs> uh, different types of platforms. Or maybe we can just find somebody else who's created the the diagram. And <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, if there's a listener out there that can just like draw a map about how all of these different areas are kind of connected, that would be great. That would be great. I would I, love I it. Think there I'll is just hang one. it on my wall right behind me. You see, I have no art back there. I'll put it back there. It's it's going to look perfect there. It's going to look perfect. Yeah. I've just got it? a map of the world and yeah. map of Pennsylvania behind me. So, Why, you live All in right. New Jersey. I know, but I like to I like to drive to Pennsylvania and go <laughs> camping there. So I've got a map of parts of Pennsylvania on my wall. Specifically, Pennsylvania. I actually yeah, I don't free, remember the last time you told me you were going to Pennsylvania. You usually go to Virginia. I'm, Virginia, Tennessee, yeah, yeah, always out and about. But he's got a map of Pennsylvania uh, on the walls, guys. Anyway, yeah, was, if you want to be the person one. who gives me a SaaS web, SaaS market niche web map for my wall, I will love you forever. Um, I don't want to design That's, it myself. Uh, that sounds really tedious. No, I saw no, sure one time, one out there. I saw one that was specifically geared to digital marketing. And it was all like the marketing apps. There's over five thousand. I'm apps sure they're all built for marketing. And yeah, and I saw like a it was a web, and it was one of those one of those documents that you have to like zoom in to like three hundred percent to actually read the words on it. Yeah, it's kind of insane. I've, I've seen a Miro document like that, and it was horrible. Somebody was zipping yeah. around it, and I, I just felt nauseous. So it's far too complex. Yeah. So those are those yeah. are not sure for large, large group consumption, really. <laughs> well, as soon as we get off, as soon as we press stop here, I'm going to jump on Etsy, and I'm sure there's there's maybe You're I'll see if there's a crocheted one. Yeah, I am. <laughs> needle I, I, point. I'm it's needle point it, Colin. Yeah, needle. That's what they call it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to find somebody to make you a needlepoint SAS map. <laughs> I look forward to it. Thanks yeah. for joining, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Produced by the Tab Geeks Network. Enjoy all of our shows on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Tab Geeks. Join our exclusive, free, no sponsors allowed Slack community and sign up for our newsletter at tabgeeks.com.